Hello everybody, it's General Guy again here, stomping back at you with another Minecraft video. The day is finally here where we dive into some legacies. This is part one of two of the superhero legacies in 7.0. This video will be going over Kryptonians, Webcrawler, and Speedster legacies. But before the video starts, only a small percentage of people are actually subscribed, so if you don't like on the video, consider subscribing. To begin, legacies have completely changed in Legend 7.0. Legacies are no longer handled in machines. Instead, press the tilde key on your keyboard and the legacy menu will open. If the switching suits game role is active, you will not be able to open this menu until you are out of combat. If you have no legacy, this menu will be blank, but still have certain cosmetic customization options you can play with. Each legacy now has its own unique skill tree to go along with it. As you learn new powers, you will begin to fill up the tree. You can eventually learn every power, going through all pathways or stick to certain routes for roleplay purposes. When hovering over an ability, it will tell you what it costs, what type of ability it is, and it'll give a brief description of what it does. To learn an ability, you must obtain skill points. Legacies no longer require vanilla XP to level up and learn new powers. To obtain skill points, simply kill mobs. You know you got a skill point when you see this message appear on your screen. Higher tiered mobs give more skill points. If you're on peaceful, there's a game where you could activate called skill points from mining, allowing you to gain skill points from mining as well. To see your legacy skill points, open up the legacy menu with the tilde key and they'll be shown at the bottom left. These skill points are independent from the ones that are required when playing as a character and are only obtained when playing as your legacy. Upon clicking an ability, a pop-up will appear asking, are you sure you want to learn said ability? By clicking confirm, you will spend the required skill points and unlock the ability. If you have enough skill points for the succeeding powers, then the next branches in the skill tree will turn green, letting you know your available paths. Because legacies no longer have ranks, all skill points can be dedicated to unlocking new abilities instead of ranking up to be able to unlock a new ability. Once acquiring a new power, you can set it by going to your loadout. Here you can see all the legacies abilities. The abilities you've unlocked will appear green while the ones you've still yet to acquire will be red. To assign an ability to a key, simply click on the power then press which ability you want to set it to. Specials will always have to be placed in the dedicated 8th slot. If you don't like your loadout, then simply press the clear key and it will reset it. You can only have one staggerable move in your loadout. If you'd like to change your staggerable, click the ability you want to swap and press the stag key. This will reset strictly the staggerable move. To check which type of move a power is, press the ability and it will tell you next to the about button. This is also shown in the skill tree when hovering over an ability. You can read an ability's description by pressing about when the ability is selected. If you'd like to reset your legacy, press the reset key and accept the confirmation message. You can also set your legacy's class ability by pressing the class key. Each legacy has different classes you can choose, and you can change them whenever you'd like. To set a class, click the class you want and then press set class. While in this menu, pressing clear will reset just your class ability instead of your entire loadout. In the loadout menu, you will see three tabs, description, stats, and customization. Pressing description will give you a brief summary of your legacy. The stats tab will display your current stats like your passives. The customization tab allows you to set different cosmetics for your legacy and player. To tweak a cosmetic setting, press the ability and set it to your armor key. Once bound to your armor key, press the ability to alter your desired property. To reset your armor key, simply press clear while in the customization tab. Even if you press clear, the customization option you set will stay. This just unbinds the key. Originating from the planet Krypton, Kryptonians possess superhuman capabilities vastly superior to any other meta. Their supernatural strength and durability, accompanied by their long list of other abilities such as heat vision, freeze breath, and x-ray vision, make them powerful opponents and potential dangers to society if left unchecked. The obtainability for Kryptonians has changed. To become a Kryptonian, you must build the Phantom Zone Projector. This requires five titanium blocks, two alien technology, and another star. To obtain the alien technology, you must go to Mars and find ruined villages, with the tech being found in their remains. Once built, simply place it down and right-click to turn it on. Upon activation, a portal to the Phantom Zone will be projected. Kryptonian prisoners will randomly begin to leak out of the portal. You must obtain their blood, but be careful as they are formidable and have a chance to stagger you. To obtain their blood, simply craft a kryptonite syringe in a vial. 
When the prisoners come out, right click them with the kryptonite syringe to extract their blood. Take this vial and merge it with a regular syringe to form a syringe of kryptonian blood. When you have the syringe of kryptonian blood, right click to inject yourself with it, allowing you to become a kryptonian as you alter your DNA. However, if you already have a legacy, this won't work. The projector is set on a timer, and after a while, will automatically close and enter a cooldown of 5 minutes. During this, it can't be picked up or broken until it's ready to be used again. Be warned though, there is one more evil that could appear through the portal. There is a chance that the tier 5 boss, General Zod, will come out with his two Kryptonian prisoners. The General Zod can fly, shoot heat vision, and ground pound. He has the chance to drop a tier 3, 4, or 5 gym, as well as the General Zod's suit. He is brutal, so you must be careful when dealing with the Phantom Zone. The Kryptonian skill tree is shaped like the logo of Superman or the House of L. Upon committing, you gain Strength 20, Speed 30 when sprinting, Jump Boost 15, Fortitude 10, Mental Defense 2, Regeneration 2 but increases to 3 at altitudes 300 and 4 at 500, Fire Resistance 2, Enhanced Vision, Water Breathing, Vacuum Adaptation, and are Bulletproof. You are immune to Poison, Radiation, Smoke Screen, Bleeding, and Fall Damage, but you are weak to Kryptonite and Sound. Before I go into their abilities, if there are any powers I've gone over in previous videos, I will not go over them again in detail. I'll do this for all legacies going forward. The classes Kryptonians can choose from are Tank, Controller, and Healer. The first ability a Kryptonian can learn is Leap, which costs 15 skill points, then Scattershot, which costs 40 skill points, followed by Toss, which is 30 skill points, and then Heat Vision, which requires 30 skill points. After Heat Vision, they will learn Telescopic Vision for 30 skill points, to X-Ray Vision for 50. After X-Ray Vision, they will learn Flight for 20 skill points, and Super Breath for 30. Continuing, they will learn Sonic Punch for 30 skill points, and Freeze Breath for 50. After Freeze Breath, they will learn Thunderclap for 40 skill points, and then Ground Pound for another 20. After Ground Pound, they will learn Rubble for 30 skill points, and then Heightened Perception for 50. Once they learn Heightened Perception, they can choose either the left path or the right path. And honestly, it doesn't matter which path you choose, as you can learn every ability. It's just which moves you want first. The left path gives you the special recklessness for 100 skill points and the special Kryptonian Combatant for another 100. The right side gives you the special Super Flare for 100. Both paths meet in the middle for Kryptonite Immunity for 100 skill points, where you absorb so much solar radiation, you've overcome your weakness to Kryptonite. As for your customization options, you can change your flight style and heat vision color. Eye size is used if your skin has wider eyes or no eyes. For shades, simply right click the shades and they will appear on you. You don't have to use them as an armor piece anymore. The customization option for shades will take your shades off. Changing your eye size will change the size of the shades. Web crawlers use their spider powers to outmaneuver their opponents, fighting for what they believe in. With great power comes great responsibility. The obtainability for web crawlers has changed. First, you need to make a syringe in a vial. Next, gain blood from any living mob or player. With the vial of blood, you need to make it radioactive by combining the vial of blood with gamma radiation. You can also use a syringe and an empty vial to gather blood from a spitter, which will automatically give you a vial of radioactive blood. Next, Take the syringe and the vial of radioactive blood and combine them to make a syringe of radioactive blood. With the syringe of radioactive blood, find a normal spider and right click it. Upon right clicking, the spider will turn into a radioactive spider. When the spider attacks, there's a high chance that you will turn into a web crawler. If you already have a legacy, then you won't be turned. When becoming a web crawler, you gain strength 11, speed 7 when sprinting, acrobatics 5, fortitude 5, Regeneration 1, Wall Climbing 2, and the Spider Sense. You are immune to poison, radiation, and fall damage, but are weak to EMPs and water if you use the special webs. You are also weak to fear toxin. The classes web crawlers can choose from are Tank, Controller, and Healer. The skilled tree of web crawlers is supposed to represent a Spider-Man logo. When you become the Legacy, you automatically learn to select special webbing and use special webbing. The first move you must learn is the Web Shooter's ability for 30 skill points. There are multiple paths you can take as a web crawler, and remember, you can get every single power, it's just which ones you want to get first. 
On the top left, you can learn Electric Web for 40 skill points, and then Web Bomb for another 30. And finally, Concussive Blast for 50. The second branch, you will learn Flame Web for 20 skill points, then Acid Web for 30, and then finally, Ice for 45. The third branch contains Blinding Web for 25 skill points, Web Bullet for 20, and the Special Web Barrage for 100 skill points. The fourth branch contains some of your kicking moves, the first one being Roundhouse Kick for 10 skill points, then Sweep Kick for another 20. The branch directly below Web Shooters is the passive ability of Night Vision for 10 skill points. The sixth branch contains some more melee moves, the first one being Uppercut for 10 skill points, and then Kick Back for 15. The seventh branch is the Miguel O'Hara branch, with the first ability being Combat for 30 skill points, then Venomous Bite for 50. Note though, if you learn Venomous Bite, you will obtain Fangs, and there's no way to get rid of them. The final ability being the Special Accelerated Decoy for 100 skill points. The 8th branch is the Miles Morales branch, where the first power is Venom Punch for 40 skill points. Channel bioelectricity into your fists, releasing it in a burst of energy when punching a target. Deals 10 damage, staggering the foe for 5 seconds. Once activated, you have 10 seconds to tag a target. The next ability on this branch is Camouflage for 50 skill points. Then finally, the new special called Mega Venom Blast for 100 skill points. Release an omnidirectional blast of bioelectricity, dealing 90 damage to all those nearby. Staggers targets for 2 seconds. The final branch starts with organic webs for 40 skill points. Here you gain the ability to produce organic webs, allowing you to fire certain webs when EMP'd. The next ability on this branch is stingers, which cost 40 skill points. You develop retractable razor sharp stingers below your wrist, able to release a polyamine venom, causing minor paralysis. Stuns the target in place, staggering them for 5 seconds while dealing 2 damage. The final ability on this branch and skill tree altogether is a new special called Mark of Cain for 100 skill points. Enhance your fingers and hand to burn scars, ripping off the target's skin. Deals 90 damage, staggering the opponent for 5 seconds. Webcrawler's customization options are the eye size and shades. Speedsters tap into the Speed Force, the very cosmic force that pushes time and space forwards, granting them incredible feats of super speed and time manipulation. The obtainability for Speedsters has changed as well. Now you have to craft the Mini Particle Accelerator. Once crafted, simply place it down and make sure it is powered. Once powered, right click the machine and you will be put inside. If you have a legacy, then you can't go in it. Once you're in, there's no backing out. You will be struck by lightning as you harness your connection to the Speed Force. Within 30 seconds, a blast will go off and you'll become a speedster. The Mini Particle Accelerator will be destroyed in the process. Once you become a speedster, you will gain these default abilities. Strength 1, but increases the 5 at max speed. Speed Force 40, where at higher speeds you gain the ability to punch at a wider range. Jump Boost 1, Fortitude 5, Mental Defense 3, Regeneration 2, and Fire Resistance 1. You are weak to powers that are cold, kinetic, and slowness based, as well as time wraiths. The classes a speedster can choose from are Tank, Healer, and Speedster. The skill tree for speedsters represents the lightning bolt or the flash logo. By default, your ability 2 and 3 are taken by increased speed and decreased speed. The first power you must learn is wall running for 10 skill points. Once learned, you can take one of two paths. The left path has more hero speedster abilities, while the second has more villain speedster abilities. The first branch takes you to arm vortex for 10 skill points, then vortex trap for 25, followed by speed force conduit for 30, then a speed boost of 20. Next is Sonic Punch for 30 skill points and the Special Lightning Throw for 100 skill points. After Lightning Throw is the Speed Force for 50 skill points, then the Special Invisible Vibrations for 100. After that, it's Speed Transfer for 50 and Time Remnants for 80. The final ability on this branch is the Special Infinite Mass Punch for 100. I'd just like to remind you that even if you start the left side, you could stop midway and start the second side. You can choose whatever ability you want as long as it connects to an ability you've already learned before. Starting from the bottom, the second branch after wall running begins with speed boost for 20 skill points, then vibrating for 25, and then heightened perception for 50, followed by phasing for 20. After phasing, it's next snap for 50, followed by lightning injection for 30, which leads to lightning gauntlet for 40, which leads to the special chest burster for 100. Next is a special electro blast for 100, then snappy shockwave for another 100.
The customization options speedsters have are their eye size, shades, and lightning colors. Here are all the colors you can have. Yellow. Orange. Red. Blue. Light blue. White. Purple. Pink. And green. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, consider subscribing for more content like this. The remaining superhero legacies will be shown in part two of the superhero.